Hi, the second topic of this lecture is goal programming. In today's business environment, profit maximization or cost minimization is not always the only objective that a firm sets forth. Often, maximizing total profit is just one of several goals, including such contradictory objectives as maximizing market share, maintaining full employment, providing quality ecological management, minimizing noise level in the neighborhood, and meeting numerous other non-economic goals. The shortcoming of mathematical programming techniques such as linear and integer programming is that their objective function is measured in one dimension only. It's not possible for linear programming to have multiple goals unless they are all measured in the same unit such as dollars, a highly unusual situation, um, an important technique that has been developed to supplement linear programming is called goal programming. Goal programming is capable of handling decision problems involving multiple goals. It began with the work of uh, Charles and Cooper in 1961 and was refined and extended by Lee in 1972 and by Ignacio in 1985. Goal programming satisfies as opposed to um, maximizes or optimize. Uh, this means coming as close as possible to reaching goals rather than opt optimizing the result. Let's take an example of single goal programming. There are a few cases that we will look at. The first one is single goal programming. The Hardgrave, um, the Harrison Electric Company, uh, revisited. So here is the company that we uh, worked on before in the beginning of this uh, lecture. Um, a profit level of $30 would be satisfactory during this period of, uh, of this company's working, and uh, uh, you know that's uh, their objective. You know, rather than maximizing their uh, profit, they are saying that, yeah, you know, if we make more than $30, then we are fine, right? So that's our bottom line. And uh, uh, as long as we make $30 uh, profit level, then we should be okay. Uh, so that's uh, their goal. And uh, another goal they have is the goal programming uh, problem. It, it, another one is that uh, they want to find the production mix that achieves this goal as close, closely as possible. So, so what are the product misses that produces this $30 of profit for our business? It could be, you know, X1 should be 3 and X2 should be 3. So 3 uh, comma 3 would be a, a combination. Uh, 3 comma 4. Uh, 4 would be a combination, 1, 5, or 0, 4. So there could be various combinations, and uh, they want to find a product mix, a possible mixes that you can use and achieve this uh, product uh, profit level. So uh, to do that, uh, Goal Programming came up with a brilliant idea that uh, uh, is uh, explained right now. So we can define these uh, two deviation variables, d1 minus and d1 plus. d1 minus is under achievement of the profit target. Say we want to achieve 30, but d1 minus would be uh, you know, $29 or, or, or uh, $28. Say you achieved $29, then there is a gap between 30 and 29, that's 1. And at the time, d1 minus would be 1. If it was $28, then 30 minus 28 is 2, then D1 minus would be 2. So it's a, just a gap between your target and your actual underachievement, that's D1 minus. D1 plus is overachievement. Say you wanted $30, however you achieved $35, then the gap between $30 and $35 is 5, and that's called D1 plus. That's how we define it. Then what happens is that you know, uh, we have our our uh, 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 our objective, 
uh, before our objective was maximizing the profit and and uh, the function was 7x1 plus 6x2 that was our maximization problem however now we change our objective function to minimizing the difference the gap between d1 and d uh, d1 minus and d1 plus so under achievement gap and over achievement gap we have these two gaps and we want to minimize that and then uh, we have the best solution, right? So that's a goal programming approach. So in that case, what we set up, uh, our constraints are, uh, we have a 7x1, the first uh, um, uh, profit maximization uh, uh, constraint or that uh, uh, objective is now uh, becoming a constraint. And you are just adding this term, 7x1 plus 7x2 plus d1 minus uh, minus d1 plus. Um, so in other words, you are going to subtract uh, d1 plus minus d1 or the difference between uh, uh, overachievement gap and underachievement gap. And if you mathematically write it, it's a d1 minus minus d1 plus. And that's uh, uh, what how it, it is going to explain. And that is now 30. And notice that we change the sign from less than equal to or greater than uh, equal to to thirty dollars because your set profit level your target your goal is thirty dollars so you are changing your um, uh, objective function to one of constraint and you are setting that as an equal to something uh, so by doing so you are making it a, a target or goal and the second uh, constraint and third constraints are the same. 2x1 plus 3x2 is less than or equal to 12. 6x1 plus 5x2 is less than or equal to 30. And that's what we used before. And now x1, x2, d1 minus d1 plus, all of them assume a non-negativity. So these are the new functions. And uh, using this one, because you have it, you can run Go programming and see what happens. Um, so, um, if I reiterate what I said, you know, analyze a goal. If overachievement is acceptable, uh, drop D plus. And if underachievement is okay, then then drop D minus. In other words, you you do not have to, uh, uh, um, you know, hold all these two variables together uh, in a cir circumstance where you are okay with the dropping overall achievement, you are fine with that, you are not concerned about it, then you can just drop uh, uh, that one. Or um, you are not uh, concerned about uh, underachievement, then you can drop the minus as well. So that's uh, what is explaining. But if both of them are important, then you can keep them here. And in this case, let's say both the underachievement and overachievement are important, then we can keep them together and run our analysis. And here is Excel solver. Um, notice that uh, we have variables x1 and x2, and then d1 minus and d uh, one plus so underachievement and overachievement gap and uh, uh, the coefficient for that is one and one right so there is the um, minimization function d1 minus plus d1 plus so i'm going to just put this coefficient one and one there an objective function is just some product of this and uh, the co constraints uh, notice that we have not only x1 and x2 but also d1 minus and d1 plus and I enter this coefficient over here 7 6 1 and negative 1 here and left hand side and right hand side I enter it and then I came over here and ran it uh, just notice that in addition to three constraints I added the integer uh, constraints because these are all pure integers and uh, I wanted to add them here and then um, ran that uh, analysis and found the answer to be, um, you know, there was no overachievement but only underachievement, which was two. In other words, um, you know, um, your, a, your production was uh, less two less than the optimal value. That's what, what it says here. Um, so, um, and uh, the solution that you find it is that x1 is 4, so you're going to 
um, uh, produce 4, x1, and uh, two, uh, 0, x2. And then at the time, you were, um, uh, in this case, your uh, minimization is 2. So um, d1 plus d1, d, d1 minus plus d1 plus is only 2. That, uh, that uh, minimization you found here in this case. And that's how you solve this question.